So in this episode of Silver, we're going to explain how the uh, writings of uh, John Fullerton enable to understand various things on the DXY of today and understand if silver is cheap or expensive. Okay. So the uh, previous episodes, we mentioned that in a system of fiat, you have some controls, you have outright price manipulation documented. Not, I'm not talking about today, I'm talking about previous episodes. You have controls of prices or flow. And we're going to go into other situations. We started with 1780s, and it's been a long period of uh, attempt to uh, restrict and to lie on the, on the government currencies. Now, um, what is the most important part to understand if silver is um, uh, undervalued or not is the following. So as I said, Fullerton, one of the great banking school writers, mentioned that it was not possible to understand if the price of silver was too high or, oh, sorry, if the price of bullion was uh, very volatile and he had a hard time to understand what was going on. He had different split markets, official and black market uh, in, in, in bullion. And what he mentioned is that this was resolved in 1819 when the coin was fully convertible. So the, there was a law repealing that were preventing uh, the um, melting and sending overseas of certain type of, uh, of, bull of coins. So the coins would not be able to only the bullion. So you had two prices, basically. And that was repealed. And that made it actually very favorable to bring your gold in, in England. Because if it's fully convertible, you like that. So it's, it was very smart. Um, but then it also had an impact. Okay, so that was the first uh, impact. The second impact is that the uh, the price, because it was fully convertible to, uh, on demand to paper, you had price discovery, and price discovery meant that the gold price corresponded to its cost of extraction, of production, all right? Uh, this is absolutely critical and very, very interesting because you can read that what it's saying is that gold prices corresponding with the cost of its production had down to this period been the most inveterate and unremitting cause of the violent and extreme oscillation in the supply of the metal. So is saying that by obstructing the free ingress and egress of gold um, and uh, 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 preventing the cost, the, the gold price to be corresponding to its cost of production, this was the reason <coughs> for the extreme oscillation in the supply of the metal and our extreme oscillation in the price. Critical. Why is it critical? Because now we can understand if the gold price is too expensive or too cheap based on the margins. Okay? And let's look at that if it makes sense. Now, when we looked at silver to gold, we realized that, oh, okay, <clears throat> in 2011, there's a spike of silver to, um, to food. Okay, this is silver and food. So we look at that and say, oh, there's a spike to food. So we had one element and, and we're thinking, mm, okay, this is a long-term relationship we noted. Maybe we were right. But according to uh, this thinking of John Fullerton, that would mean that in that period the margin would be high. Is it the case? Well, let's find out. Ekla mining. <coughs> you see at the bottom, 2011, peak margin. 2011. Fortuna Silver Mine, 2011. Peak margin. Um, Pan American Silver, same story. First Majestic, same story. Gold Resource, this is a very small, uh, so maybe not that representative. Barry Gold, same story. 2011, very high margin. 
Newmont, very high margin. Now, where are we? It says Newmont tells us, if you uh, look at the relationship, Newmont is saying 2014 should be very low margin. <coughs> you expect the silver to be cheap in food. All right, let's look at that. Oh, yeah, around 2014-2015, that's the low of the cheapness of silver to food. Okay, so where are we right now? Is, are the margin at the bottom? No. Are they high? No. They are telling the same thing on Newmont. The margin is not as low as the low of 2014. The margin is low, but not as low as the 2015, a bit delayed. Uh, gold resource, now this one is particularly uh, low. And about the silver, is it the same silver? It, had, it has a, different, a bit of a different profile, but it's not high. Uh, Fortuna mine, Bah, very bad margin. Pan American silver, it is bottoming at 2015 and then it's slow again. And first majestic, it's bad. Margins are bad. So, long story short, miners is a terrible business in fiat when you mine precious metal because you're always going to get whacked. You're always going to be robbed by some sort of... Uh, uh, your price, you, you have the cost, but the price, they're always going to try to find a way not to pay you because it's a bad signal for currencies which are uh, uh, consistently debased. But the good news is we know that silver, we have a second metric indicating to us that silver, based on the margin, is not anywhere close to 2011. So while the price is about the same, it's not even the same, um, and in the case of gold, it is. But the margin tells you the costs are so much higher. So we are just fine on the price of precious metal and silver. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.